Welcome to the Korean Atlas and History. Each episode, we will take you on an exploration through some aspect of Korean culture, the landscape, the history, and more. Today, on the Korean Atlas and History. Korean History. The Jilmun Pottery Period. The Jilmun Pottery Period was a period of Korean prehistory from around 8000 BC to 1500 BC. The Jilmun Pottery Period is known for Yonggi Moon pottery found at many archaeological sites. Yonggi Moon pottery is the oldest type of Korean pottery, and the name literally means raised design pottery. Yonggi Moon pottery are flat bottom wares with relief designs raised through horizontal lines and other impressions. According to radiocarbon dating of this pottery, It is among the oldest known pottery in world prehistory. The incipient phase of the Jilmun pottery period is considered to be about 8000 BC to 6000 BC. During this phase of prehistory, man was just becoming civilized. Not much remains of this period, and there's still some speculation as to whether these people are the ancestors of modern-day Koreans. The early Jilmun pottery period lasted from around 6000 BC to 3500 BC. This period is characterized by deep-sea fishing, hunting, and small semi-permanent settlements with pit houses. A pit house is a building partly dug into the ground and covered by a roof. A pit house will provide basic shelter from extreme weather, but not much more. Early Jilmun settlements can be found at locations such as Sapohang, Amsadong, and Osanli. Near the end of the early Jilmun period, shellfish began to be harvested. The Middle Jilmun period covered from about 3500 BC to 2000 BC. This period shows signs of the use of stone tools and plant remains. The plant remains appear to be mostly from millets. Millets, a form of variable small-seeded grasses, are cereal crops that can be grown around the world. Because of these millet remains, it is believed that agriculture may have begun in Korea at this time. However, not all archaeologists accept these millet grains as domesticated for three major reasons. First, as the millet was found in North Korea in Jitamli, only black and white photos of the find exist. Second, the millet was gathered out of context in an unsystematic way. Third, the original description of the millet was only in Korean, and thus it is still disputed as to whether or not agricultural domestication of plants began at this time. If there was a cultivation of plants at this time, it was likely as a supplement to a diet that relied heavily on fish, shellfish, and hunted animals. Pitsalmuni pottery, or classic Jilmun pottery, first appeared at the end of the early Jilmun era and continued to be created throughout the middle Jilmun era. Pitsalmuni included vessels that exhibited comb patterning, cord wrapping, and other decorations. The late Jilmun period of Korea lasted from 2000 BC to 1500 BC. During this time, the diet changed to become much less focused on shellfish and much more focused on cultivated plants. The agricultural system of this time appears to focus on shifting cultivation, a method in which plots of land are cultivated temporarily and then abandoned and allowed to revert to their natural vegetation, while the cultivator moves to another plot. 
Another possible method used at this time could have been slash and burn agriculture. Slash and burn agriculture involves first the cutting of plants. The down plants are then left to dry and they are burned, resulting in a nutrient rich layer of ash that fertilizes the soil. During the late Jilmun period, people began to have further inland settlements in places such as Songchori or Daepyeong and Imbuli. Daepyeong is one of the more important archaeological sites from this era and the eras that followed. Daepyeong has Jilmun pottery shards that indicate that occupation of this area began in at least the Jilmun pottery period. In addition to pottery shards, pit houses from the end of the Jilmun period were excavated. Charred human skeletal remains were discovered in the corner of a pit house inside a large pottery vessel apparently used as a burial urn. In addition, there is evidence that this may be one of the first ditch-enclosed sites in East Asian prehistory. Carbonized seeds found at the site appear to show that the people at this site were engaged in small-scale cultivation. It seems that the late Jilmun people were encroached upon and displaced from their resources by the Mumun pottery people. The Jilmun people, which had decorated pottery, soon began to be displaced by the Mumun people, which had plain pottery. Although the pottery style of the Mumun people was not nearly as intricate as the style of the Jilmun pottery people, it seems that they had superior slash and burn cultivation techniques. And thus, with the encroachment of the Mumun pottery period, the Jilmun pottery period came to a close. We hope you have enjoyed the Korean Atlas and History. Much of our information has been obtained through the Namu Wiki and Wikipedia. If you want to learn more or study the Korean names of these places, check out our Memrise tool. If you wish to download all the episodes of this podcast, want more information, or want transcripts of this podcast, visit us at www.koreanatlasandhistory.com. If you wish to send us an email, you can email us at koreanatlasandhistory at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.